take us to Romans chapter 1 and begin in verse, I think, 16. Praise the Lord. I will be, yeah. I want to take a moment, pray. What I'm going to share, I'm going to share from here to launch, and I'll probably take five minutes on it, just so we can begin from the fear of God. Fear of God is to the beginning of wisdom, and it's also to where we depart from evil. And uh, this impacted me so much 20 plus years ago. I don't remember now when. I just know I had a lot of little kids. And it always is my place of return. And whenever I'm f failing, there's two places I know where to go. I go to forgiveness and I go to thanksgiving. Because if, I am, if my faith's not working, try forgiving. That's, I understand that. When I forget when debts are incurring, faith doesn't operate. It's all debts and funk. So if I start forgiving and being forgiven, I start, faith starts coming back alive. Well, the other part of faith is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the completion of faith. And, in, and, and through the scripture, well, not until Thanksgiving has really been brought forth is faith settled and the outcome set forever. So uh, Romans chapter 1, I ask you, Father, that you would just give us the ears of the, of the, the hearts of soft hearts to hear and to listen to the uh, eternal truth that are found in these verses so that we can take advantage of the simplest of act that we each have the power to employ, that will release the power of the Holy Spirit in all of our lives, regardless of circumstances, regardless of who we are, where we are, what we've done or what's been done to us, that this force of faith will be released anew in each of us so that we will go out this week into the greatest uh, you know, experiential connectivity, connection to God and his grace, his power, and his miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we were familiar with these first two verses. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That's why we keep uh, staying in the Bible. We, you know, November or December's calendar's now been put out. It's the practicing of immersion into the scripture where faith is communicated and then faith is released and we go from faith to faith and we live from that place, not from sight. For the wrath of God, now change the subject, but it's in the same subject. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And we're witnessing a lot of that today. Because, now here's the reason. Because what they may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them for since the creation of this world, of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Simply put, you have to work hard not to believe in God. You have to be indoctrinated. You have to make a decision. You have to make choices. To, to put God out of the equation of the creator, of the sustainer. And so that's why we're out with, that's why there's no excuse. Because, now here's this, this little verse. Let me just say, this little verse is the hinge. You go, you go as the verse describes, then you, you fall headlong into the apostasy of the earth that we're in, living in right now. Because of this one little verse following after it. The same is true at the matter where you are, where we are. If we begin in this little verse again, we can undo the destruction that's oh, overwhelming us or overwhelming the people. So it says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful. So there's two things that God asks of us when we know him and in our knowing him, is to glorify him as God and to be thankful. 
or as they used to say, one of the, the chief aim of man is to glorify God and enjoy him. To have a vibrant place of gratitude and glory being offered to him because he is God. Now, when you don't do that, you set yourself into the course of rebellion without realizing you're, you're not probably trying to be rebellious. But it's, but it's, so what happens is they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. So without a, a, a vibrant, glorifying God posture, being thankful to God posture of life, our thoughts start to go funky and our heart starts to get dark. Now, once the, th the thoughts start to go funky and the heart starts to go dark, then we're open to greater and greater deceptions and troubles. So it says, they profess to be wise, they became fools. Self-reliance is, the, is the, the dismantling of trust and reliance upon God's goodness. We tried to do it ourselves. So they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, like birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. So rather than the image of the incorruptible God being the place of focus throughout our day, thanking him for his ability, his goodness, his kindness, glorifying him as God, being thankful in the midst of the day, we shift and we start to say, well, this will save me. This will save me. Part of the thing, what we heard in the pandemic was we were all, everyone was saying, we're going to let science save us. Science will lead us. Well, he says, therefore, God, everything is a cause and, you know, kind of a process. If we disconnect from God's ability, greatness and goodness and his faithfulness and his kindness and we go, don't, we go further from him, we go further from light, further into futility, further into darkness, further into self-images. It says, therefore, God also gave them to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. You've been around long enough, you know the lie is that I can live apart from God, that I can be, I am a, my own uh, self-sufficient power source, that life can be attained through knowledge, and if I understand what God understands, I can do what God can do, rather than it's uh, the truth is Jesus and the dependency upon God for my breath and grace to do and go forward in everything. So they exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm a believer in caring for our environment and loving our planet, but our planet isn't our mother, and, and we can't serve our create, the creation. We must surrender back to the creator. If, if, if the earth would, the human, humans of the earth would begin to say, Father, we want to return to the creator and understand how we are to be in submission to you and trust you for healing and help in our land. Would you please heal and help our land? We would see all of the issues that are being documented that need to be resolved, be resolved. Because it's the creator is in charge of the creation. We can't serve the creation. We have to serve the creator. But you see, it's going all backwards because of failure to glorify God and be thankful. For this reason, okay, now we're, we're further down, God gave them up to vile passion. For even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. So you see the spiral? Just the degradation, uh, just losing clarity and trust and submission to God. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, it's funny, you said, I don't want to know about you, God, and I don't want to think about you, and I don't want you to be in bothering me. God will provide. God gave them over to a debased mind, to those things which are not fit, to do those things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, 
disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the, do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Pretty much our culture, right? And it all happened because we stopped glorifying God and being thankful. Now, we can uh, turn, that, uh, turn that outward and go around and try to get people to do that, but you've got to start with yourself. And it was a bunch of years ago, I was giving baths. That's how long ago it was to our kids. And I was reading that, and it came to me that, Lord, with all of my problems, they weren't nearly as gross as those problems stated, but they were still my struggle, my troubles, you know, trying to... And I said, God... I've got to glorify you as God, and I've got to be thankful. I'm, I'm right now grumbling and complaining about where I am and not happy with what's happening to me. And I, I made that change, I remember, because we were in the, the, the bathtub, probably two kids in there, little ones. I turned, the only other place in the bathroom was the throne. So I knelt over by the toilet. I lifted up my hands and I said, God, my Father, I want to glorify you. You are God and you have placed me where I am to do what I'm doing at the, way, at the moment I'm doing it. And I am forever thankful and thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just started to release that sound of thanksgiving. And literally, I, I, I came out of discouragement, despondency, whatever funk I was in, and found the Lord to be more than faithful, not by sight, but by faith to produce in me the, the capacity to, to rise above the circumstance. A uh, number of years ago, probably 20 years ago, I asked the Lord, and we, you, if you've been around this long, you'll remember, I said, Lord, I want at Jubilee to be the most thankful church in all of California, the most grateful church. Some of you remember that? that we'd be the most thankful, grateful church in all of California. Now, Look, knowing the way God works, I in some ways regret having asked that. Because thanksgiving in the kingdom does not come from your living experience. It comes from your, your relationship with God. And God believes that everything he says is true and everything he said should be received as truth and, and embraced as all sufficient and better than the circumstances. So to grow authority, circumstances will often go the opposite. In other words, Thanksgiving in the Christian life isn't because life's going well. Thanksgiving in the Christian life is because of Jesus Christ. And because it is a charge, a command, and it's because we have put our faith in his ability and not in our ability. And it's, it's actually the very force of moving that direction upward and toward the Lord to glorify him and be thankful. Let me take you to a quick little verse story in Luke 17. And why I think we, uh, the night of giving thanks is such an important night and we'll give room for everybody to, to speak their testimony of God's goodness and faithfulness. In chapter, Luke 17, chapter, uh, chapter 17, verse 11, I want to share a little story. The G, of, a, of an incident when Jesus' ministry. It says, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. If you're ever questioning what does glorifying God look like, it's making God big. It's extolling him. It's Telling him, telling him back the truth of his word. It's proclaiming the great works of God. It's just glorifying. And he, so he comes back, glorified God, and fell down on his face 
at his feet, Jesus' feet, and gave, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? I love Jesus. It wasn't just one cleansed. There was ten cleansed. But where are the nine? Where there, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except the foreigner? Now, I catch this because this is going to answer. This is probably one of the reasons the church has such a hard time ever keeping anything that gives, is given to us. He said to him, the Samaritan, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Thanksgiving is the completion of faith. Without thanksgiving, I question myself if I have any faith in that matter. Because if I have faith, it will, it will culminate in thanksgiving. So you could reinterpret what's being said is, He's saying, okay, you finished the faith. Your faith has made you well. You received, now you came back. You glorified God. You give him thanks. It's yours. Go. Go. What happened to the other nine? Don't know. But there's something about thanksgiving that is key. I'm just talking for the fact that we all today can go out of here laying hold of thanksgiving intentionally. And going, I don't care where I am and what I'm going through. I'm going to be thankful. I am going to express thanks. I'm going to, well, let me show you this. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 2. I'll, I'll start rolling in a, fast, in a few minutes with so many of these. Let me pull that out, move this, go back to cancel that, and go to this, power of thanksgiving. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. This is just, once you start seeing this, you'll see it everywhere. Today's reading, John 6. Did you read that? It says, and lifting up the bread, he gave thanks. The five loaves and the two fish, and it fed for 5,000. Later, it's recorded that he gave thanks afterwards they fed the 5,000. The thanks we came was happening before the 5,000 get fed. He, he was, this is the way you complete faith. No thanksgiving faith is yet fully not completed. I think that's a key that you can almost monitor where's your faith by how much thanksgiving's flowing, especially to the things you cannot yet see. You, as you therefore have received Christ. Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. We hear that, right? We're in Christ. We're going to walk in Christ. Rooted, built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it. Abounding in what? In the faith. Abounding in the faith with thanksgiving. If you want to have abundant faith, you've got to release thanksgiving, abounding in it with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day. Let me see. I've... Second Corinthians chapter 8. We've been here before, but it's worth reading. Um. Verse 10, we'll just start there first. And in this second, no, I'm sorry, that was my mistake. Chapter 9, verse 10. Now may he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. So thanksgiving is this, is like something's happened. It's what we do in polite society, in civil society. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We, we, we make a part of gratitude. 
And so for the administration of this service of the giving, not only supplies the need of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God. So every good thing that happens, then we should be, besides being grateful for those who have been a part of that, we should then turn and give thanks to God. It's amazing. It's amazing what is in all of this. Let me... Um, prayer always includes thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. If you pray and didn't give thanks, you didn't finish praying. Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, it, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, we're all pretty good at making sure God knows what we want. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But verse 6, back to, he said, with thanksgiving, with, accompany prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Philippians chapter 1, Paul had this same experience in regard to the Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 3, he said, I thank God, my God, upon every remembrance of you. Now, I would to God that everybody, everybody I remembered, I thank God for. But I have to learn to do that. I have to choose to do that. Because otherwise, you know, it's what, you know, we get snagged by the, what's bad happening. Paul told in Timothy chapter 2 and 1, he said, I want you to give prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving for all men. So when was the last time you thanked God for your enemies? There's, there's power in thanksgiving. That's why it's being tried to be take, stripped away from us so we don't have gratitude. I remember 20 years ago, Francis Franchipain said he felt that one of the greatest sins of America might be ingratitude because we came so accustomed to everything that we weren't grateful for the things and we, we felt entitled. I don't know. But let me, let me show you this powerful verse. Uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. This one. This one's great. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. You want to take your prayer life above? Get vigilant with your thanksgiving. Did I thank God yet for this moment? Have I thanked God for the outcome that he's bringing? Have I thanked God for the opportunity to discover him in this moment I'm in trusting? Have I thanked God in this trial? Have I thanked God over this trial? Am I standing in agreement with expectancy of a miracle working God stepping in to see what he's going to do? Whoa, that's the power of thanksgiving. It changes the attitude from a victim to a victor. From wondering what's the outcome to a knowing assuredly, wow, we know God's going to do something great. Something great. Turn with me to uh, 1, Thess 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse uh, 16, I believe. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. My favorite verses in the Bible. That, you know, people are always asking, what am I supposed to do? What does God want to do in my life? How do I get to the next place? Where am I supposed to go? Who am I going to marry? What job am I going to have? What city am I going to live? What am I going to do? What's the will of God for me? Here it is. Rejoice always. So I haven't had anything joyful in my life or how I can't remember. Did he, he, rejoice always. Joy is abounding. It's inexpressible. It's full of glory. And it's in the seen, the unseen Jesus Christ. In his presence is fullness of joy. Rejoice means to get that joy back forward. Some of us have, have such a, a materialistic view of Christianity that unless something physical happens good, we have no reason to be in joy. But we can enjoy Jesus when we're in a severe testing and trial because we see him who is invisible and our faith causes joy that's inexpressible, full of glory. Joy comes out of faith. 
Thanksgiving. Pray without ceasing. Start the day in prayer. You'll continue the day in prayer. Miss your moment, the hour of prayer. You pray, may never pray. It's just get that prayer going. The conversation's going. In everything, give thanks. Inside of everything. Inside of everything. Well, I'm not giving thanks for things I don't like. Well, who made you the judge? How do you know God doesn't want you there? Well, he doesn't want me in anything bad. Where did you read that in the Bible? You're going to go through pressure to get inside the kingdom. You're going to get your faith will be tested so you can know that your faith is real. There's going to be temptations that, that are going to expose who our flesh is and our weaknesses so that we can become more dependent upon and trusting in the Lord. In everything, give thanks. I thank you for today. I thank you for this. I, I mean, literally, it's, it's, it's so counterintuitive. But if you take the place of life that you wish you could get out of and trying to change and everything you do, you're trying to change and it's never changing. And instead of cursing it or, or fighting against it, just stand in the middle of it and go, oh God, I just want to give you thanks right here in this place that I am in. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. You don't know. That might be your cross. What's a cross? It's whatever's killing you. That you didn't put yourself there and you were trying to get off of it. Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. I, I got a vision one day of walking after Jesus, doing everything I could to have a perfect life, happy life, and a free life. And, and Jesus turns around and looks at me and says, Where's your cross? <laughs> to follow me, you got to have a cross. Now, don't worry. You don't have to try to go find it. I guarantee you, you already know where your cross is. <laughs> you right? You know the relationship you can't get out of, the job you wish you weren't in, the, the testing over your life, the, the emotions you carry that you wish you could be free of, just whatever it is. But what a cross is, is you got to pick it up because you can't stop following we don't have time to resolve this. We've got to keep following Jesus. We don't have time to, I want this all fixed, but I don't want to lose the, I want to keep up with Jesus. So I've got to pick it up and follow you. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Beloved, it's counterintuitive, but once you start doing it, you'll feel the presence of God, the spirit of God, the witness of God, the word of God will come to you, and you'll begin to go, you know what? My, my mind's not, my thoughts aren't futile. They're getting sharp and clear. My heart's not dark anymore. It's beginning to see the brilliance of God. I remember the first time I, I had the ability to recognize that what I was complaining about a year or three or four years before were now the, the means to which God had trained me to reign in a new way. And I said to the Lord, I thank you for everything you brought me through. And I realized he's bringing us through. We're going through the valley of the shadow of death. We're not going to die there. We're just going to be fearfully intimidated there. But as we learn to trust in him, then we can, we, it's just, it just started to become like, oh, I can understand that. I got to give thanks for this is the will of God. So tonight, today, we're all going to go home. We're going to go, I'm in the perfect will of God. Well, how do you know that? Well, I'm rejoicing and I'm praying and I'm giving thanks in everything. Go. Oh, that's all it takes. Why? Because it's in Christ. This is the will of God for you in Christ. Rejoice, always pray without ceasing in everything. Back to that verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God inside Christ Jesus. That's why I can give thanks in the midst of wherever I am because I'm inside Christ Jesus. And inside Christ Jesus, I am to walk about in thanksgiving. And thanksgiving, rejoicing, and praying is, is a pleasing aroma to Papa who gave me the provision of everything I need, salvation, healing, strength, miracles, inside Christ Jesus. So while I'm going through whatever I'm going through, I can say, Jesus, I want to rejoice in it. your fullness of joy, your abundant joy, your inexpressible joy that you provide for me in you. 
Oh, Lord, I thank you for the peace that passes all understanding and guards my heart and my mind inside you. I thank you for the abundance of grace that's in you. I thank you for my health that's in you. I thank you for my wealth that's in you. I thank you for the abounding of hope that's in you. That's walking by faith. That's not walking by sight. That what, who, wherever did you read in the Bible that you can judge where your life is by how it's looking? You cannot judge. I cannot judge how I'm doing by how I'm looking or how I'm feeling. I have to determine what the scripture says and then allow those to be truth that I choose and then begin to allow those words to go back up and God says, I agree with that. You're in a pretty good place in my son. He's your healing. He's your salvation. He's your deliverance. He's your joy. He's your peace. He's your victory. He's everything you ever will need. So just thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good job. Go for it. Ephesians chapter 4. 520. Oh, I love this one. We'll start at verse uh, 15. Is this helping anybody? I mean, seriously. I'm giving like the secret weapon. The, 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 the secret weapon the Christians dropped. I mean, seriously. I, I've never heard more complaints from Christians in the last three years than any time in my life. Complain about everybody and everything. And where's it got us? You don't, in the kingdom of God, advance inside curses by cursing. You advance inside curses by blessing. You do not advance inside the kingdom of God when evil is being assailed at us by doing evil. You advance inside the kingdom while evil is assailed by doing good. You do not advance inside the, the cursing, but by blessing. You do not uh, come and overwhelm the enemies that are prevailing by doing evil back to them, but by loving. So here we are. See that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, the days, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but be understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So may I say to you that everything about to follow needs to be filled with the Spirit. Because that's how we have the capacity to go beyond what the natural is requiring of us. Because we want, the flesh will always retaliate with what was done to it. It'll always reinvoke what was sent. But the Spirit will always go, no, we're, we're overwhelming that. We're going to overcome evil with good. So he says, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. We should be, we, we get to have praise fest. Praise fest. Seriously, beloved, do not wait for a reason to praise. You have all the reason. His name is Jesus Christ. And the more you praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Have a song in the heart. Giving thanks for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know that, 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 that's, that's a bit to swallow. For all things. Well, here will help because I, I, I love like in Christ is inside. The word for literally means over, which I think that's a pretty cool idea. I'm going to give thanks over everything. I'm going to thank God over it. I'm going to thank God over the midterm elections. Hallelujah. I'm going to thank God for wherever we're struggling and troubling. I'm going to th put thanksgiving over it. Uh, thanksgiving over it. Thanksgiving to God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you're Lord of everything. You're king of... You. It just invokes faith and power and grace. One more and I think we're done. Praise you, Jesus. Shoo, shaboo, shaboo. Okay, Colossians, maybe two. Colossians 3.15 and 17. Colossians 3.15. Mm. 
Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. The word be means to become, become thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Beloved, it does not matter where we are and what we're going through. What matters is peace ruling. Peace is the kingdom. It's the hallmark of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Where the God of peace will soon crush Satan under our feet. The, that we have now have peace with God, having been justified by faith. We have peace with God. God is at peace with us through the Son, Jesus Christ. And in the Son, we are at peace with God. And we can have peace rule in our heart. We learn the kingdom. It's righteousness, peace, and joy. So we're going, okay, I'm here. I'm in. Peace is here. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Become thankful. Become thankful. Become thankful. And the word of Christ dwell in you richly in wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Jesus, I want you to enable me to come alive in thanksgiving as you were with the Father. I want you to, I want to behold what you could behold so you could rejoice in what you would rejoice. Remember when he's all happy about that God is revealing who he is to babes and hiding it from the wise and the prudent? He says, I give thanks to you. I give thanks to you for thus it was right in you. You see, part of the, what happens with thanksgiving, it returns sovereignty back to God and it returns trust into our lives. You can't trust God if you think it's up to you to do what you got to do for God to do what he's going to do. And if you don't do what you do, God won't do anything. It's trust that says, I'm going to trust God and hope in your mercy. That's like one of my new favorite verses. I'm going to trust in God and hope in your mercy. Not hope for mercy. It's like, oh, I hope mercy comes. No, I'm looking forward. Mercy, mercy's all over the place in Jesus. Giving thanks. One last one. First Thessalonians, First Timothy chapter 4. Yeah, 4, verse 1. And then we'll, we'll pray. One day I tell everybody we're going to be done at 11.45. We'll be done at 11.30. Maybe I'll start saying we'll be done at 3 and we'll be done by 10.15. I don't know. It just cracks me up. Oh, oh, we're going to have more of these. We're, we're giving away all these handkerchiefs, and they're just, they're going to pray over those in a minute. Um, I believe there, God wants to baptize anyone who's bap, not baptized in the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues, or it's been a part, long, long season of not flowing in the river. I want to pray for people for that. We want to go for food. We want to get our picture taken. So now the Spirit expressly says, Holy Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. We're about to have Thanksgiving this Thursday. And Lord willing, we'll all have places to go. And if you don't, today's your day. You have a place to be. And if you don't have that place you want to be, then you can still be thankful to God in the day and rejoice with joy inexpressible. Or worse, if you have to go to some place you don't want to be, <laughs> then you can be thankful and rejoice because you're, you know, all the reasons we have those conflicts. But he says it's to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it's sanctified by the word of God and power and prayer. So I'm thinking, okay, well, the word and prayer, that's what's going to sanctify the meal. No, it's with thanksgiving. It's with thanksgiving. It's with thanksgiving. 
to this Thursday it could be like, like a, you know, again, why would Thanksgiving be a day of sorrow? Why, do, why are more arrests happen on holidays? Why do people get in domestic disputes? Why do fights break out? Because there's not the capacity to, to, to turn into the power of Thanksgiving. And we start looking around and what's happening? Why am I here? I hate being here. I don't like my life. I don't think that God's helping me. But I don't want to say that because I know he is helping me, but I don't really believe it anymore. And we just kind of just really come out in the wrong way. We don't have to. You and I are in charge of how thankful we want to be. And when I ask the Lord we could be a thankful church, boy, it seemed like all the reasons for Thanksgiving left. But then I found that Thanksgiving doesn't come from where I'm at. It comes from whom I'm in. And because I'm in him. And then I can begin to just say thank you. And if you don't know how to start, just start with recounting your life from where you are as far back as you can remember. And thank God for the journey. Thank him for the faithfulness of God. Thank him for he is sufficient. Thank him for that, that he is See, I thank God for everything. I thank God for all my stupid decisions, all my sins of righteousness that really were not righteousness, but self-righteousness that inflicted destruction in other people's life. I thank God for it, because how in the world would I ever learn that I was an idiot? Except to try things and see that that was not what they meant to be. And yet, it, I thought I was being holy, but I wasn't being holy. I was being self-righteous. And I wanted to control things. And I wanted to make sure. Th so now I can go, Lord, I just want to thank you. Now, I don't think I could know you had I not walked with you through hell that I created. But I'm grateful that you were so insistent that you would not let me have my way through my own effort that every time pride rose you resisted me every time i tried to rise up you pushed me back down i am so grateful i am so grateful now the next time i'm in that i won't be <laughs> but i'm learning to quickly to retreat to go wait a minute god's resisting me this is the god can god can change anything america in a, in 30 30 minutes could be in a worldwide revival if God chooses that that's the moment he wants to do it but right now I think he likes us stewing in our juices see how miserable you can be until you start praising my son and start calling his ability and start lifting up his name seriously Whew, Jesus let's stand together whoa I'm not teaching you something that I just learned and I want to say, if you will practice thanksgiving in unthankable places, you will soon find yourself thanking God in beautiful places. Some of them will change because you'll see the vision of where you are and why you are where you are. Some of us are where we are because this is where God wants us. He wants me here. He wants you here. He wants you in that miserable place. Who else is going to be there for him? Who else is going to be a witness of the goodness of God in the land of the living in a miserable spot? But you and me. We don't need to change any circumstances. We just need to let the heart of, uh, rise up in thanksgiving. So let's just raise our hands and begin to thank him. Thank Jesus. Thank him for life. Thank him for the day. Thank him for your marriage. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your loss. Thank you for the things you have lost. Every loss is to gain Christ. Oh, praise you. And the ones that matter the most are suffered violently lost. Oh, praise Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that God created us to glorify and be thankful, to glorify and be thankful, to glorify and be thankful, to glorify God and be thankful. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Lord, forgive our ingratitude. Forgive our complaints and grumblings. Oh, we praise you. Thank you for the United States of America, right where she is, right at the moment, so that this, you, our God, can show yourself strong. Thank you.
for our neighbors next door who don't mow their lawn. Thank you for whoever, wherever we're at, the coworker we despise. Thank you. We would not learn patience without trouble. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Thank you. Go ahead, be bold. Thank him for something you don't like. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you. I praise you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you for our families, our estranged families, our strange families. We thank you for everyone. We thank you for everyone, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, and whatever situation they're in. We declare that you are God and you are good and you're glorifying yourself in this matter. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. Lord, we forgive all who have come against, who have spoken against, who have hurt us. We turn away from holding their sin against them. We remit their sin and we release blessing to them. We ask that you'd move their life forward and fulfill your destiny in them and unlock the hope of your calling in them and the riches of your glory of your inheritance. We forgive and we give thanks. Forgive and give thanks. Forgive and give thanks. Right now, the Holy Spirit's bringing to remembrance some really uh, kind of quirky things, some weird people in your life that you really have shut out and shut down. And God says, why don't you thank them for me? And some of us are releasing some debts that have really, really felt like they, they hamstrung us. Life went wrong ever since that event, ever since that person. And you feel like, oh, if only that wouldn't have happened. And God says, just thank me in the midst of this give me praise forgive and release the people and let me turn it around for what i want you to know me in let me be more than enough let me be the sufficiency holy spirit what we're talking about is way beyond our pay grade and beyond our means only by the only by the power of the holy spirit it said that re Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and then gave thanks. Would you fill us afresh? Would you fill me? Fill me with your Spirit that I can respond to life like Jesus did. Fill me with your Spirit that I can respond in life like you did. Fill me with your Spirit, Jesus, that I can respond in life like you did. Fill me with your Spirit. Fill me with your Spirit. Praise. I want to be drunk with your spirit. I want to be intoxicated and see life from your glory realm. Oh, Badeati Sadama. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Just breathe in. Just receive. Just receive. Breathe in. Receive. Salvation is in Jesus. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is in Jesus. Healing is in Jesus. Deliverance is in Jesus. Forgiveness is in Jesus. Thanksgiving is in Jesus. Love is in Jesus. It's everything in Jesus. Receive. Receive. Yes, Lord. Whoa. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're everything. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're everything. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. Come on. You don't have to go home empty, man. You can go full. There's more than enough of healing, health, deliverance. Oh, it's in Christ. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We receive your love, Lord. We receive your joy, Lord, your peace, Lord, your righteousness. Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, Lord. Everything, 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 everything is in Christ.
posture. We can live here. We can live here. Posture our heart every day, glorifying God and being thankful, thanking God and glorifying Him. And I believe, and you, you start to experience the authority and the blessing and the power of God. And it's not by changing the circumstance, just the heart changes and everything else looks different than it did before. Lord, we thank you for meal, a Thanksgiving meal. Thank you for the ladies, especially, who work so hard to cook all those turkeys and all that food that we're having, all the fixings. We thank you for those who came to, to take pictures that we allow, that we can use and enjoy, however. We thank you for them. Thank you, Lord, that you're taking the your tangible presence and moving it into hearts and touching people that are being healed and not by a gimmick and not by a gadget and not by any kind of whatever. It's just that it's, 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 we're, we're saying that inside of us dwells the power of God to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And that tangible expression of miracle power can be transferred onto handkerchiefs, prayed over, loved on, confessed over, prophesied toward, and spoken to bring healing to the sick and deliverance to those who are demonically influenced. And we thank you for that. So we're going to go eat. If you've not, if I will pray for anyone and everyone who, who needs a touch of the Holy Spirit, and that, you know, especially if you've never been filled with the Spirit and speak in other tongues. I'm being more convicted every day that that is one of the, lo the lost practices of the believing believers is speaking in tongues and being filled with the Spirit and, and dependent upon uh, tongue, you know, the encounters. So I want to keep, I'm seeing people baptized in the Holy Spirit weekly now, and, and I'm really thrilled with that. And I just think that that's next to salvation. If you've never been saved, you never, if you did not, if you died today and you, and you, would you go to heaven? Would you know that you would be accepted in the beloved? Would you be received? If you're not sure, we need to pray for you. You can be filled with, you can be saved by just saying, Lord, I believe that God raised you from the dead and I confess you as my Lord. Come into my heart. Make me the person you want me to be. I can't do it myself. And that faith is righteousness. And that confession is salvation. And we start our march toward the Lord. We're in a brand new day. We're in a brand new day. We're in a brand new day. It's so good. So God bless. Love one another.